again, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Hall County Sports Television. I'm your host, Gary Glenn. Now, we're going to get to all the springtime sports in just a moment, but with the NCAA Final Four and all the March Madness and stuff, we're going to kind of put an exclamation point on that on the local scene as the crowd at the first North Georgia All-Star Basketball Classic featuring Hall County seniors against others from around the area got their money's worth. The girls' game featured an exciting end. Gainesville's Hunter Pugh hit a layup at the buzzer, which sent the game into overtime, tied at 68-68. Hall County Stars, playing on the black team, then took a 72-71 victory. North Hall's McKenna Rushton led the black, scoring 25 points and grabbing 11 rebounds to earn MVP honors, while Gainesville's Rebecca Webster also scored 13 points for the black. Now, it was a split, though, as the area Stars beat the Hall County locals 110-88 in the boys' game, a high-scoring finish to the evening. Lakeview Academy's Austin Pearson was the local team leader with 18 points. Johnson's Ty Odom added 10 more. We'll bring to the show now a couple of guys that were involved in the instigation of this. Adrian Penland, who played his high school ball here locally at West Hall, and Mario Mays, who played over at Gainesville High School. Gentlemen, thanks for coming in. Yes, sir. Thanks Thank you. Had. Tell me uh, how all of this got started now. Um, myself, Adrian, and uh, Robert Alfonso, we had a conversation, and we wanted to try to do something for the kids in our area. Uh, a lot of attention is always put on the metro area, and we felt like it was time to have an all-star game to honor the seniors here. And we just came up with this idea, um, and our goal for the future is to hopefully make it an event where some of the kids in our area that haven't been seen mm -hmm. get an opportunity to um, be exposed to some of the college coaches, Division Two and junior college can come up and actually uh, see what we have in our area. And uh, we actually had, I think, five to six coaches there this time, and we thought that was real good because we were kind of behind the ball yeah. um, with putting this event out there. But yeah. now we feel like with a year's time to plan to do it again next year, we'll have a, a whole lot better turnout from the coaches. And, and Adrian, we've got a number of colleges right in the area now that play basketball. Uh, Bernal, and Piedmont, Truett McConnell, mm -hmm. uh, Young Harris just up the road here. Yeah. So this is a chance for them not to have to go to the metro Atlanta area and see some kids, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was a great turnout, and uh, it was a good game. And hopefully in the near future, most of them schools will be at this game. And uh, I know they will because we've got some talent. And uh, it, was, it was great. It was great. Were you surprised it came together so quickly? I know you said you got behind the eight ball a little bit. In fact, you, you finally just had to pick the kids, didn't you? Yeah. And, and in the future, that you want to get more coaches more involved. Yeah. Right. Next year, we're going to have it where the, the, the local coaches, they'll pick um, the seniors that they feel like deserve to be a part of the event. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So were you surprised that it, that it turned out so well? I understand Man. that, like I said, the, the high-scoring game for the boys, a really, really close game, overtime game for the girls. Man, I was very surprised, man. We worked every night. Me, Mario, Rob, Jamil, Hessler, uh, we worked every night on this. And the, for the turnout that we had, it was amazing. Looked like the kids had a good time, too. They did. They did. I think they were just happy to be honored. And I think some of them, having played against each other all season long, it, it was kind of neat for them to play together. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was very neat. Uh, actually, we was going to uh, separate them. And, and at the beginning of the game, they were like, no, nah, we want the Hall County kids to stay together. So we just kept it like that. I think that's a good idea. Yep. I think that's a good idea. So what do you hope to take this to now, the, the next level, as they say? Um, next year, what we plan to do is we plan to end a, a slam dunk contest, a three-point competition. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, really make it just a, a full-scale event for the community to come out and, again, honor the kids. And, then, you know, with all that in together, like we said, also bring these college coaches up to – get a look at some of the kids that maybe haven't signed already or haven't committed to a school. Now sometimes, you know, I mean, if you're really, really good, they're going to find you. Yeah. But occasionally they need another look, don't they? Right, oh, yeah. right, right. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, I, I just feel like um, what I've seen in the past, everybody always flocks to the metro area. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I really feel like it's, it's, it's some talent here that deserve the opportunity to play. And maybe not everybody Division One, but, you know, some Division II, NAI. NAI, junior, junior college, college, absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and think, if you put something on down in the Atlanta area, too, sometimes, Adrian, you just get lost, don't you? Yeah, you get lost, man. Just, it's too many ball players and too many coaches. and There's some great ball players up here, and that's what we showcased last Friday. So, Well, you mentioned it was a lot of work, so there have to be some people you need to probably give a shout-out and give some credit to. Yeah, we want to thank, uh, definitely thank Robert Alfonso and Jamil Hester. We also want to thank uh, Smokehouse Barbecue. Want to thank the Shane's Real Shack, right? Uh, Long Street, uh, K 
campaign. cafeteria. Um, we also want to thank um, all our coaches, Brenda Hill, Gilmore. We want to thank Coach uh, Ty Cottrell, Coach Duke Mullis, and Coach Hazel Hall. They were the coaches for the for the they team, were the right? For the team. And uh, a special thanks goes out to um, Miss Elizabeth Carswell, mm -hmm. Miss Jamie Reynolds. Um, when we were sitting down, uh, just with this idea, and in the very beginning, you know, they they pushed us and told us, "Hey, I think you got a good thing." And, you know, I think you should go out and try to push it. And we want to thank Jacobs Media also for mm -hmm. um, helping us out and, and the Times. And, the time. and uh, also we want to thank Joe Long for, he did a lot of work for us. And uh, just the, the body at Gainesville High School for letting us showcase this at their school. So. Oh, that's, oh, that's a good place to do it too. Yeah. And also we have to thank uh, Nate with uh, Hobbs Sport oh, yeah. for the uniform. Yes. They did a great job. Thank yeah, I saw those. Were, those were neat. Yeah, those right. look good. Yeah. All right. Guys? Good luck with this in the future. Great idea, Adrian Penland, yes, Mario sir. Mays. Thank you. Come back and talk to us some more about this, all right? We'll give you a, give you a plug or two here on the Hall County Sports. All yes, right. sir. Thanks. In some other hoop news, the awards continue to pile up for North Georgia sophomore sensation and Gainesville High School alumnus. Let me do that again, Gainesville High School alumnus. Yeah, here we go. Now, in some other hoop news, the awards continue to pile up for North Georgia sophomore sensation and Gainesville High School alumnus Jamie Carnes. Following the most impressive single-season performance in North Georgia women's basketball history, Jamie last week was named the Dactronics Division II National Player of the Year. The highest honor in the country comes as no surprise for the soft who was named the Peach Belt Conference Player of the Year and Southeast Region Player of the Year following her first season at the NCAA Division II level. Carnes becomes the first North Georgia women's basketball player also to be named an All-American by the Women's Basketball Coaches Association. Jamie's just the second player in PBC history to lead the nation in scoring, averaging 25 points a game. She finished with 624 points, scored the 10th highest scoring total ever in the history of the Peach Belt Conference. She scored 30-plus points three times and had a career-high 40 points against Bernal. She finished second in the league and 15th in the nation in rebounds per game with 11.2 and recorded 20 double-doubles that led all of the NCAA Division II. She also led the league and was ranked eighth nationally in blocks. She also set North Georgia records for total points in the season, scoring average in the season, and free throws made. The sharp shooter holds North Georgia NCAA Division II single game records for points in a game with 40, blocks in a game with 9, and field goals made in a game with 16, a mark she accomplished twice in the span of 35 days. Well, the Times basketball players from this past season were announced Sunday, and they were both from East Hall. Jasmine Jenkins for the girls and J.C. Hampton for the boys. Jazz Jenkins, by the way, will be competing in a three-point contest put on by American Family Insurance this coming Friday night at the Alario Center in New Orleans. By the way, at North Hall's Christy House was the Times Girls Coach of the Year, and Dawson County's Thad Burgess got the nod as boys team coach. And congratulations to the McEver Mustangs, 12 and under girls, who won the Hall County Championship recently, and congrats to the Flowery Branch Indians, who did the same thing for the 10 and under girls. We're back to the diamond when Hall County Sports continues. This program is also brought to you by Long Street Cafe, now with two locations in Gainesville, 1043 Riverside Terrace and 405 Pearl Nicks Parkway. Open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, Monday through Saturday. Long Street's got the reputation for Gainesville's fastest drive through and the best fried chicken you'll ever sink your teeth into, plus veggies, a full salad bar, and great desserts. Check today's menu at www.longstreetcafe.com. Call a friend and meet them for a hearty meal at Long Street Cafe, where they put the home into cooking. Hi, I'm Rob Bruce, pastor at McEver Road United Methodist Church. We'd like you to invite you to be our guest between now and Easter for a special sermon series called Terror and Amazement. You might be asking, why Terror and Amazement? Because the original end of Mark goes, so they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Won't you be our guest and come and see? We're back. I'm Gary Glenn, and this is Hall County Sports. As we said before the break, this is our baseball segment. Andrew Lahr got the win as Flowery Branch edged Clark Central 5-4 last week in Athens. Greg Davison went 1-2 for two with a homer and 2 RBI. And then C.J. Navin drove in 3 with his hit on that particular game. And then after that, the Falcons came back and beat Clark again at Hog Mountain 7-2 that final. Chandler Newton struck out 7 over 6 innings. Chase Holsey had 2 hits, scored twice for the branch, the first on a wild pitch, and the second one on a pass ball. Chandler Malecki had a two-run single, while Logan Conley drove in Brody Thomas with a double, and Kelton DeVoe also drove in a run with a double. Falcons ended the week with a 10-2 loss to Loganville, 
They started this week at 8-3, and three, and we bring to the show now the Falcon head coach, Scott Myers. And Scott, uh, two out of three last week, so not too bad. I know you wanted to end the week a little bit better than you did, but uh, overall, you're playing pretty well, as I said, began this week 8-3. and three. Yeah, I mean, I think overall we've done okay uh, to this point. Uh, we need to sure up a couple of things offensively, uh, try to get the ball back in the middle of the field. I think, you know, early on in the year, I think the first couple games we hit about four home runs. So uh, all our kids are excited about getting, you know, getting that barrel out and mm -hmm. trying to hit it over the fence. So uh, we've kind of struggled as of late, you know, uh, change-ups, breaking balls. Which, I mean, think we, you know, we're out on our front foot and we're just kind of being a little bit over-aggressive. Sometimes over aggressive is good, and sometimes it's bad. But um, you know, yeah, last week wasn't so bad. We told them uh, first of the week if they won three, we'd take them out to eat. And <laughs> we didn't get to go eight. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. What effect have you noticed uh, the new bats having on the game? I, you know what, honestly, I, I haven't, I haven't. It, it doesn't look like to this point that it's bothered the home run production. Um, you know, we still we we've been able to hit some balls hard in the gaps. We've been able to. I mean, hit some home runs. I think last year we ended up with 14 or 15 on the year, and probably to this date, this year we've probably we'll probably cut it in half. So I haven't noticed a huge difference. Um, maybe a little bit less pop off the barrel, but you know, it's it's sweet spots a little yeah a little, little bit short, smaller. Little yeah, little if you smaller. square it up, if you can hit, you can hit. You can hit with a wood bat. You can hit with you know you you can hit. If you can hit, you can hit. You can square it up and you're gonna be okay. But that's the thing that you think you need to shore up, as you said, Absolutely. a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's what we're struggling right now. We're just, you know, I think we're just a little bit over aggressive, and you know, we got we got some guys that have been in the, they've been playing for us for the last three years, and now they're, you know, got a little bit of adversity, and uh, they're struggling a little bit, and they thought it was going to come easy their senior year, and I think now they, you know, not necessarily that they took it for granted, but you know, they had some good years last year and the year before, and they kind of look back saying. Uh, that they're going to jump right back in it and do the same thing they did last year and uh, probably a little bit over aggressive pressing a little bit at the plate. So. Mm -hmm. Now, as I did the intro to the piece here, uh, I mentioned a lot of names, and, and right. apparently that's kind of the case. No superstars on this team. You just got people that, that kind of step up day to day. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's where we got to be. I mean, we got to get some guys on, and, and you're right. It's been, it's been somebody different, it seems like, every game. You know, CJ's had some good – He's had some clutch hits for us in a couple different games. Breck's done a good job. Um, Logan Early did a good job for us, and you know those guys getting on in front of him. And um, yeah, it's been it's been a hodgepodge of, of of success to this point. Is there a team in your region in Quad A that that's broken out right now, and is everybody's chasing, or is, is it kind of anybody's game? Right I'd now? say yeah. Well, I'd say Loganville's. You know, they're the. I think. At the beginning of the season, they ranked 25th nationally. Wow! So, uh, or I, I don't. It may have been even halfway through to this point, but I'm not sure. But at some point, they were ranked 25th in the nation. So, um, and we, like you said, we went over there and played them Friday night. And I think they're probably the the favorite to win it. Um, but you know, on our side, it's us, Winder. Uh, I feel like us and Winder's the the you know. Mm -hmm. I feel like we can if we can if we can take take care of business, we got a chance to, to win our side anyway. Do you like this little format of playing a guy at their place and then turn right around and playing him again at your place? No, nah, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't vote for that, but, you know, what do you What, what are you going to do? do? Yeah. Yeah, it's the region, and that's what they want to do. So it's different. I'll say that. It's uh, it's different. When I uh, I coached in Tennessee for um, nine years, and, and one, I mean, there was a stretch there where we had district games the same way. We went Wednesday, Thursday, mm -hmm. or Thursday, Friday. We played district games Thursday, Friday. Um, and you know you 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 at least see everybody's pitching style. So, yeah, there you go. You know that's a that's a good part of it. But it, I mean you know it's it is what it is. And if you can't go out and take care of business on those days anyway, I mean you better have more than one guy throwing for you anyway. So yeah, and if you're, you're not right. going if you can't do that, you're going to be in trouble anyway. Yeah. yeah. So this I think this is good in the sense that it, you know kind of opens everybody up to the same kind of sense. Scott Myers, thanks for coming by. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate you having me. Ab absolutely. absolutely. And good luck to the Falcons the rest yeah, of the thank way. Thank you. Appreciate it. In other baseball, North Hall got by Lumpkin County 6-4. Avery Smith struck out three and four and a third in getting the win. Zach Myers, three for four. Andrew Smith, two for two with an RBI. Jesse Strickland, two for three with an RBI. Preston Graham then scattered four hits and got the complete game win as the Trojans shut out White County 2-0. Myers scored the first run as Strickland drove him in. Jesse then scored himself on an RBI bloop single by Wade Phillips. And despite Andrew Smith's homer, the Trojans ended the week with a 5-4 loss at Oconee County. 
Gainesville beat West Hall 13-5 in a game which seemed to be headed for a mercy rule decision before the Spartans rallied and forced it to go the distance. Benny gaining for the Elephants was a six-run fourth. Stephen Mason got the win, striking out seven in four innings and retiring 11 straight Spartans at one point. Chad Petrie picked up the save. Michael Geddes was three for four with four RBI and two runs scored for the winners, while Cameron Johnson had three RBI, a stolen base, and a run scored for West Hall. David Gonzalez struck out eight in a complete game win for the undefeated Elephants in a 7 nothing win at Oconee County. Mason doubled and scored twice, while Ryan Griffith drove in two runs. Then the Big Red Machine rolled on undefeated as they mercy ruled Franklin County 11 0. Hunter Anglin struck out seven and helped himself out with a two run homer. And Geddes, who relieved Anglin and struck out three, also homered a quick solo shot to left. And when your pitchers throw strikes and also hit home runs, you're pretty tough. Gainesville Bats also came alive as the top six hitters had at least one RBI each. Johnson got a three run homer and five RBI from Chris White as he went two for three in a 13 1 decision over Meadow Creek. Jordan Green struck out five in getting the complete game win. The Knights then won a 15-10 slugfest over White County as A.J. Benefield was three for four with a three-run homer, a grand slam, and a two-run double. And he also picked up the win in relief. Trey Wilson two for two with a three-run homer, a two-run double, and five RBI, while Chris White was four for four for the Knights. East Hall edged Raven County 8-7. C.J. White had two RBI with three hits as the Vikes won it on a bases-loaded walk in the eighth. The Vikings then beat Raven again 7-1. Jonathan Woodring scattered three hits in six innings and struck out nine. Hunter Buffington was three for four for the Vikes, and C.J. White smacked two doubles. Lakeview beat Tallulah Falls 11-5. Derek Fadul was three for four with two doubles. Harrison Stiles drove in two and doubled. Justin Roldani struck out six and three in the third and got the win. Then the Lions beat Athens Christian 5-2. Stiles got the win with seven strikeouts, and Dakota Chalmers picked up the save with three Ks in the last inning. Ted Reynolds two for three with a double and two RBI for the Lions. Riverside's baseball team defeated Social Circle 9 for 4. Colin Patel was 3 for 3. Orlando Lynch 2 for 3 and gave Frazier 2 for 3 with a home run. While the pitchers, Jacob Harrison, went 5 and 2 thirds with 10 strikeouts for the win, and Drew Coffey got the save. The Eagles had to come back on Prince Avenue, Christian, and tie the game at the top of the seventh on a homer by Lynch before going on to a 9 7 win. Lynch 2 for 3 on the night, while Coffey got the win with 7 strikeouts and 7 innings. He was also 2 for 4 at the plate. Christian Farris struck out 3 in the two extra innings for that save. And West Hall beat Chester T 9-3. Jake Shirley, three hits, two stolen bases, and three runs scored, while Zach English got the win. We're back to the soccer pitch when we continue. There are moments in life that you wish would last forever. Dreams that really do come true. Treasures worth protecting, and a future to prepare for. Turner Wooden Smith is with you every step of the way. Established in the Gainesville area in 1905, Turner Wooden Smith has become Northeast Georgia's largest independent insurance agency by offering professional service at competitive prices. Turner Wooden Smith, ensuring your future since 1905. There are hundreds of options when choosing apparel or promotional items at Jake Iyer Advertising and the Trophy Case. We're all about quality and competitive pricing. Sports items are in stock. Look for special pricing on letterman jackets, corporate apparel, corporate gifts, and custom embroidery. All local high schools should check out the line of spirit wear and trophies. We're also offering custom screen printing available for any team sport. Be on the winning side when you choose Jake Iyer Advertising and the Trophy Case, locally owned and operated at 250 Dawsonville Highway, Gainesville. Call 770-718-0062 or on the web at jgeyer.com and trophycaseltd.com. Welcome back, everybody. This is Hall County Sports, and I am your host, Gary Glenn. As we said, this is our soccer segment, and let's talk a little bit about Johnson soccer. Well, West Hall's girls edged Johnson 1-0 on a late goal by Rachel Klein last week, a keeper for the shutout, Alex Smith. And the Johnson boys jumped to a 4-0 lead before the Spartans stormed back and almost caught them, but the Knights survived it 4-3. Spartan boys then bounced back with a 2-1 win over Oconee County. Pedro Perez with both goals there. And then Johnson's girls beat White County 1-0. Brittany Martin with the game's only goal. Edgar Ochoa had two goals and an assist. In the male Knights, 7-0 trouncing of White County. The Johnson Knights, the boys beginning this week at 8-1-2 overall, 5-1 and and 8 AAA. And we bring to the show now Coach Brian Shirley, the head coach for the boys of Johnson. And Brian, before we turn the cameras on, you and I were chatting. And a pretty good year so far for the Johnson soccer programs, period, boys and girls. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's going uh, well, uh, both on the boys and girls fronts, trying to, you know, get back to our ultimate goal of winning the region and uh, 
you know, going back to state. Now, as we began this week, Gainesville is undefeated in the region, but everybody else has been kind of beating up on each other, huh? Absolutely. You can't take a night off in this region. It's crazy. Uh, you know, Chester T's right there. They beat us early on in the season. And then you got North Hall, their only loss was to us. And then Walnut Grove, their only loss was to West Hall right now. So it's a little, little crazy in spots two, three, and four uh, fighting out for the rest of the season. Do you expect things to kind of sort themselves out as the season goes along, or can we expect more of the same? Uh, at this point, you can't ever tell. I mean, uh, <laughs> Gainesville still, you know, they still have to play North Hall. They still have to play Walnut Grove. They play, uh, start to play Oconee. We still have to play Oconee, we still have to play West Hall, we still have to play Gainesville. North Hall, uh, they still got a couple tough games left as well as Chesity. So and we probably won't know for a couple more weeks exactly what's going what's gonna to pan out. What have you been the most pleased with so far this year as far as has it been offense or defense or has it been an overall team effort? Um, we've been playing pretty well defensively since the beginning of the year. We've had a couple of hiccups uh, against Chesity. Uh, we didn't play very well as a team. We played more individual soccer instead of team soccer that night but uh, you know we, we've changed formations a little bit we've adjusted tactically uh, a couple of personnel moves back and forth and uh, we started to, to grow and play well together as the season went on and that's all you can ask for is get better each and every game out uh, you know offense we're starting to click now starting to, to learn each other uh, we had to replace a lot of goals last year that graduated. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we're, we're getting there. But defensively, I, we've been solid from, you know, keeping with Josh Martin all the way our back line. Uh, Midfield is doing well playing, you know, defensive soccer as well. Um, other than that, I think we've pitched uh, six or seven shutouts on the year. You know, a couple of, couple of hiccups throughout the season. But, you know, we're, we're playing very well overall defensively. Uh, I, I keep seeing Ochoa's name a lot in, in the paper and the published stuff that I read about. Is he kind of your offensive leader, or, is he, or have you been kind of sharing that load? Uh, he's sharing the load a little bit with uh, Jonathan Mendoza. Uh, uh -huh. I think they're tied for the team leading goals right now. Uh, Edgar's, you know, finding his form. He's, uh, he's fit. He's playing well. Uh, the game's, you know, you know, he's filling the game pretty well right now. Uh, he's just got to continue to play within himself and not try to do too much. I think early on in the year he might have been pressing himself a little too much, a little too much pressure. And, uh, you know, he's kind of sit back. We've adjusted some stuff, and he's he's been a little bit better uh, the past couple of uh, weeks. Now, based on what you said earlier, there's not really anything that you're – not not one big showdown matchup that you're pointing towards. It's kind of you got to play well the rest of the way, don't you? Huh? Yeah, e each region game is important. Uh, I mean, I think last year we had teams that finished 9-3 and three or 8-4 and four in the region didn't go to state. Wow. So in, in this region, every, everything's tough. Uh, you know, some of the guys, they were looking ahead early in the year to the Gainesville game. They had to calm down. Guys, one game at a time. Mm -hmm. You can't look ahead and, uh, you know, take it for granted, you know, that April 17th matchup. I mean, it'll be huge, but, you know, we got three or four more games prior to that that if we don't take care of business, and that game won't have as much significance as it could have. If there are there one or two key things, Brian, down the stretch that you say, we've really got to do this to make the playoffs. Um, play our game. Uh, we've, we've got to play our game and not be drawn into playing an opposition style. We've got to stay within ourselves and play our game and, you know, basically take it one game at a time. And, you know, when the opportunities are there, we've got to capitalize on the opportunities. You know, we'll, we'll create chances within the game, but we've, we've got to make sure we finish the chances that we create. And uh, play simple. That's the that's the big thing. Soccer is a simple game, but the hardest thing to do is to play it simple. <laughs> it's one of the one of the biggest quotes that uh, that you that you've heard on the soccer world. So, well, good luck to you the rest of the way, Brian Shirley, you, head it. coach of the Johnson Boys Soccer Team. Thank you, sir. Turning to more soccer, the Flowery Branch girls rolled over Wanderbara four nothing. Castiel Elrod with three goals and an assist. Lauren Dunn with another shutout in goal, while Leo Manzo had a hat trick as the Branch boys made it a sweep over the Barra Bulldogs eight nil. The Branch girls' win streak, though, came to an end as Heritage edged them 2-1. J.C. Ramey with the Lady Falcons' lone goal. Kevin Restrepo had the Branch boys' only goal as they also lost 2-1, their first region loss of the year. North Hall's boys beat Oconee County 4-3 in overtime as Dylan Martin scored twice. And then the Trojan boys beat Lumpkin County 3-0. Zach Tibbs with the goal and assist. Lady Trojans got a hat trick from Tristian Bailey in there. 4-0 blanking of Lumpkin. Ryan McCarnell had his second hat trick of the season as Riverside, last week's HCS feature team, crushed Towns County 9-0. The Eagles were rated number eight in the state last week, by the way. Marcano had another three-goal performance as the Eagles ended the week with a four-zip blanking of Georgia military. 
Tatiana Castillo had five goals and an assist as East Hall beat up on Hart County 10-0, while Saul Lopez had a hat trick in the Viking Boys 8-0 win over Hart. Vikings then beat Dawson County in a game decided by penalty kicks on the boys' side. Hartley Carter had two goals as Gainesville's girls beat Chesity 4-2. Liza Carpenter, officially signed on to play at Young Harris, scored a goal and assisted on one of Carter's. Sadie Foote had both of Chesity's goals. Gainesville boys extended their winning streak to nine straight with their 6 0 win over the War Eagles. Aiden Rising and Merle Velasquez had two goals apiece of the Elephants' six tallies. And Lakeview's boys got a couple of goals each from Tyler Kimball and Dustin Snyder in a 5 3 win over George Walton. The Lady Lions beat GW 4 1 as Amy Groth and Carly Kinney had a goal and assist. And the boys also beat Jackson County 4 2 as Snyder had two more goals for Lakeview. Back to wrap it up when All County Sports completes. Hi, I'm Rob Bruce, pastor at McEver Road United Methodist Church. We'd like you to invite you to be our guest between now and Easter for a special sermon series called Terror and Amazement. You might be asking, why Terror and Amazement? Because the original end of Mark goes, So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Won't you be our guest and come and see? Hall County Sports is brought to you in part by Green Ford on Browns Bridge Road in Gainesville. Check out the latest deals and remember when you go green, go Green Ford. By Mountain View Auto Repair, a full service shop for all of your automotive needs. Call Danny at Mountain View Auto Repair at 770-535-7278. And by McEver Road United Methodist Church. Visit us on McEver Road in Oakwood with three worship services every Sunday morning, Kidstown and adult small groups. McEver Road United Methodist Church is dedicated to transforming the world through the good news of Jesus Christ. Back, I'm Gary Glenn, wrapping up Hall County Sports for this week. Track and field last week, North Hall won a meet with Johnston and East Hall, led by Gabrielle Hoffman's first in the pole vault and high hurdles. But what a meet for Johnson's Latavia Cheeks, who won the long jump, won the triple jump, won the 400, and ran on both winning relay teams. North Hall, by the way, also won the boys' side that particular evening, led by the Cross Brothers. Imani won the shot put, and Thillow both hurdle races. Javon Witt won the 100 and high jump and ran on East Hall's winning 400 relay team for the Vikings side of things. At the Longhorn Invitational Sugar Hill, West Hall's girls beat Gainesville, Chester City, and Lumpkin County. Lanisha Kearse won the high hurdles and was third in the intermediate hurdles for Gainesville. Maya Caldwell Booker won the long jump in 200 and ran second in the 100 for the Lady Elephants. In tennis, Johnson's girls and boys swept East Jackson 5-love. Gainesville boys also shut out Johnson 5-0. And Johnson's boys edged Monroe area 3-2 and the girls shut out the Lady Hurricanes. Lakeview's boys beat Jefferson 4-1, while Chesity's boys edged Lumpkin County 3-2 and White County by that same score, and the Lady War Eagles beat White 4-1. East Hall beat Banks County 4-1 in boys' play. North Hall's boys got by Franklin County 3-2, while the Lady Trojans shut out Lumpkin County. Flower Branch's girls shut out Madison County 5-love, and both branch teams beat Windebarra 5-love. Riverside tennis began last week, rated number 8 in the state, and they beat Lakeview 3-2. Okay, time now to name our Athletes of the Week, both from Johnson this week, for the males, A.J. Benefield for his great game against White County. Not only got the win, he hit two home runs, won a grand slam. And for the females, Latavia Cheeks, Lady Knights track and field, had a part of five first places last week. And finally, the McKeever Road United Methodist Men's Club will be sponsoring a golf tournament on April the 14th at Mossy Creek Golf Course in Cleveland. The format will be a four-man scramble. There will be prizes for closest to the pin and a long drive contest. Prizes will be awarded to the first and second place teams as well. Cost for entry only $50 a person or $200 a team. Entry fee will cover not only your green fees, but your cart, goodie bag, and lunch. And the cost for sponsoring a hole is only 50 bucks as well. All proceeds from the tournament used by the McKeever Road United Methodist Men's Club for their projects. Check should be made out to the McKeever Road UMC Men's Club. And for more information, you can call Lloyd Smee at this number, 770-967-3206. Again, 770-967-3206. Until next week, I'm Gary Glenn, Hall County Sports. Uh -huh.